on the past. So we are continuing on with our 30 day challenge. And in fact, we're on day number nine. And this week we're focusing in on praying Ephesians chapter three, verses 16 through 21. And that prayer is specifically Paul praying for the church at Ephesus, that the power that's been made available to him, that he prayed about him in uh, Ephesians chapter one, that that power that's on the inside of them be made active and available and touch and affect every area of their life. So we're going to be praying that for each other. We're going to pray for the church all this week. We're going to pray it for our individual selves, our lives every day as we continue on the momentum of this 30 day challenge. Amen. So yesterday we started with um, verse 14. Let's just start there this morning, afternoon or evening, whenever you're watching this, whenever you're watching this. Verse 14 says, for this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family, notice the family, we are the household of faith, amen, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, amen. What else? That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, that you would be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And we looked at the Amplified, it said strengthen and reinforce with mighty power, hallelujah, by the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost. And that as we yield to his influence, he literally pours out his power, his might, his ability on the inside of us. And that causes a chain reaction. In fact, verse 16, praying in faith for the church, praying in faith for yourself, activates verse 17. When you pray verse 16 in faith, it activates verse 17. So let's look at verse 17. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Hallelujah. It says, we're praying this all this week, that the anointed one, translate to meditate, because Christ is in his last name, his office, and it's a method of operation. Praise God. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Notice that, by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. That he's going to move over into verse 18. But this morning, we're going to focus in on verse 17, that Christ, the anointed one and his anointing may dwell in your hearts by faith. So we know that he's talking to born again, spirit filled believers at the church at Ephesus. So why is he saying this? I'm glad you asked. Now, um, when you look up the Greek word for dwell, it's made up of a, um, a compound word, two individual Greek words that are give you a, a complete thought. Now the first part of the word dwell in the Greek means to live in as a home. So I thought when you're born again, like you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Let's keep on reading. So the first part of dwell is to live in as a home. And the other part of it means to settle down and to be at home. So you're in the same house but that other person is welcome in the house in your life. Hallelujah. All right, let's keep reading. Um, the Weiss Word Studies in the New Testament gives a, a expanded translation, says that Christ might finally settle down. I'm like talking to saved people, spirit-filled people. That Christ might finally settle down and feel completely at home in your hearts. Now, um, um, first of all, it's amazing. You can pray that for, for yourself and you can pray that for somebody else that first of all, the power of the indwelling Holy ghost would start to be poured out in their inner man. Mighty power would be poured out in the inner man and that that would activate something on the inside of them that would create a desire in them to yield to the presence of God to such an extent that they make him welcome. They welcome the Holy Ghost. And when they welcome the Holy Ghost, he ushers in the presence, the reality of the presence of Jesus in their life. 
Whew, I almost want to shout. Hallelujah. What's that talking about? Um, you can be related to somebody and not have a relationship. Um, my, my mother and father broke up when I, was, when I was a baby, a little baby pastor. And I didn't meet my father in person until I was 40 years old. So I was a bigger person. And then after that, we had kind of um, a long distance relationship. We would talk on the phone. He would call me. I would call him every month or so, every few weeks or so. And so, though, even we were related by blood, by DNA, actually, we never really had a relationship. You can be related to somebody and not have a relationship. You can live in the same house with somebody and not have a text me and not have a relationship amen and a bunch of married people said amen but that's not the case for you anymore right so we're talking about not just being related to god by by the new birth but having an actual daily relationship with him pray that for somebody else you can pray that for yourself and if you yield to the presence of god he will make himself welcome in your life and bring all of his baggage with him. The good part about God is he has no negative baggage. Amen. Glory to God. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We open our hearts. We open our minds. We use your word as our template for our prayer this morning. And Father, we pray that you would grant us, according to the riches of your glory, to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power by your indwelling spirit in our inner man. Hallelujah. Causing that the anointed one and the anointing and his anointing would made, be made welcome in our hearts by faith and that we being rooted and grounded in the love of God may be enabled, empowered to comprehend, to seize with all of the saints, each and every member of the body of Christ, all of our members, all of our partners, that we would all be able to comprehend and lay hold to what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height of the love of God. That we know this love by personal experience, which passes mere of personal experience. And Father, causing us, causing us to be filled with all of your fullness. Thank you, Lord. Make yourself at home in our lives in our hearts and in our minds. Feel welcome, sir. When we're sitting on the couch watching television, welcome. When we're on the internet, sir, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And daddy, lastly but not leastly, now unto you who is able and is doing exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to your power that's actively at working in us right now, Father. And Father, I'm asking you that that power is being reactivated, restarted, jump-started in the lives of our members and our partners this morning. Those who've laid down their earnest expectation that you place within their heart, they're taking it back up. The dreams they put down, Father, we think that you're energizing them. They're taking them back up. The hopes that they've lost, Father, the power of God is, is re-energizing them. They're picking it back up in Jesus' name. And that power that is available to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all they could ever pray, all they could ever consider, that power is actively at work in them. Hallelujah. And as we believe and receive all that you have prearranged for us to have, Father, that you are glorified in the church by Jesus, the anointed one, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Father, this morning in the authority of Jesus, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. I'm saying this, I'm praying this for our partners this morning and our members for the mighty work you're doing in and through their lives in Jesus' name. May they reflect, may they reflect your glory in every area of their life in the name, in the authority of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just a little note, um, today is Tuesday, day nine. Um, tomorrow is Wednesday, so we won't be dropping a, a, a new video Wednesday morning, but we'll be continuing on with our teaching about the 30-day challenge at Wednesday, the Wednesday night 
Bible study. So we'll continue on with this teaching. So some people ask me like, where's the, where's the video? It'll be, we'll be teaching about this tomorrow night, starting at 7 p.m. In the name of man. Pray that for somebody else. Isn't that wonderful? You could pray that for somebody else. Somebody that you know that's a believer that's struggling. You don't have to talk about them. You can pray for them. Amen. Now, they're they, they going to do what they want to do. But God's going to move on their behalf because you asked, you asked him. Amen. Pray that for yourself. Man, pray that for yourself. The Holy Ghost will change your want to. If you give him permission, he'll change your want to if you yield to his influence. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going long. Look at my time. I'm going long. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you again Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Then afterward, we'll see you on Thursday and so on and so forth. We will be, we will be back in the house this Sunday. Hallelujah. 1438 Pine Street, 1030 a.m. San Francisco, California. See you there. Should the, lay, should the Lord say the same. All right. I'm, I'm starting to blither, blather. Thank you for coming. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God.